According to a study, almost 75% of the people in India are not covered with any form of life insurance. That's almost 100 crore people. And those people who are covered with life insurance have only got a coverage of 8% of what would be required for their financial protection. Can you believe this? Life and medical insurance, which is one of the most critical aspect of any individual, is highly underpenetrated in India. That said, it brings immense potential for these insurance companies to grow in India for the next 20-30 years. And one such company that is the leader among the private insurance companies in India is HDFC Life Insurance Company. Hello everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy where I explain everything about money management in layman's language. In this video, we are going to do the fundamental analysis of HDFC Life. As usual, we'll start with the company and its business and then we will discuss about the competitive strength, its future growth prospect and then we will discuss about the financials of the company. Finally, we will do the valuation analysis to identify whether it is worth investing in SDFC life at current level. So let's get started. Started in the year 2000, SDFC Life is a joint venture between SDFC Limited, which is the leading housing finance company in India and a Mauritius based investment firm called Standard Life Aberdeen. As of September 20, SDFC Limited has got the controlling stake in SDFC Life at around 50.14%. SDFC Life chairman is Mr. Deepak Parekh. I am not sure how many of you are aware, but Mr. Deepak Parekh is one of the most prominent personality in the corporate India. In this journey of last 40 years, Mr. Deepak Parekh has been the man behind the success of SDFC Limited and SDFC Bank. Mr. Deepak Parekh is also the non-executive chairman of SDFC Limited, SDFC AMC and SDFC Ergo General Insurance. Mr. Deepak Parekh is also known as the voice of corporate India and he is also a go-to person for any government policy implementation. In 2006, Mr. Deepak Parekh received Padma Bhushan from Government of India for his contribution in the corporate sector in India. If you look at the business of HDFC Life, it has got various products catering to different needs of individual. If you look at the various products of HDFC Life, that has got categories like term insurance plan, within that it has got HDFC Life click to protect plus, click to protect corona coverage etc. That has got retirement plan, then it has got health plans, that has got children's plans, that has got savings and investment plan which include HDFC Life Sanchai Par Advantage, HDFC Life Click to Wealth, HDFC Life Sanchai Plus etc. For example, if you are someone who just need a life cover then you can go with their term plan. But if you are someone who has got a very low risk appetite or about to retire in few years then you can opt for their plan which provide both life cover and a fixed return on maturity or a fixed income post retirement. Overall, on the company and its management, I would rate it 10 on 10. The first competitive strength of SDFC Life is that it is a part of SDFC family. SDFC Life is the part of one of the most prestigious business group in India, which is SDFC Group. And SDFC Limited holds 50% promoter share in SDFC Life. SDFC Life is strategically a very important arm of SDFC Group. SDFC Life also get huge benefit of the brand name of SDFC and it also get access to the entire customer base of SDFC Group. Next key strength of SDFC Life is its established market position. SDFC Life is the number one company in the private life insurance space in India. It has got a market cap of around 17.7% by FY20 which has been growing consistently. Further, as the insurance penetration in India increases, SDFC Life is going to get lot of benefit to strengthen its market position. Third key strength is its strong and diversified distribution channel. SDFC Life has got a very diversified distribution channel with 270 plus partners all over India ranging from traditional bank to NBFCs to fintech firm and insurtech firms. Next key strength is its outstanding customer support. SDFC Life focuses a lot on providing exceptional customer services right from onboarding customer to the claim settlement and this is one key differentiator for SDFC Life. Next key strength is its full budget adoption of digital businesses. SDFC Life has adopted technology big way. For example, it has recently implemented digital CCD which is customer consent document which is a critical document during the onboarding of customer and this entire digital CCD has become automated. 
Likewise, 60% of its post-sale verification is done online via its video-based authentication mobile app. It has also seamlessly integrated the onboarding of its agent via online channel. If we discuss about the competitors of HDFC Life, then it includes LIC, which is the biggest life insurance company in India. Other competitors include SBI Life Insurance, ICIC Life Insurance and Max Life Insurance. Overall on the competitive strength, I would rate it 9 on 10. Now let us look at the key factors that is going to drive growth for HDFC Life in the future. So the first factor is the changing demographic profile. India is one of the youngest population in the world. But in the next 20 to 30 years, its insurable population, which is between the age group of 20 to 64 years of age, is going to increase to almost 1 billion people. And these people would need both saving as well as protection plans. Moreover, the population above the 60 years of age is going to triple in the next 30 years. And that would bring immense opportunity in the retirement space for long-term income and annuity products. Very few people are aware of two subsidiaries of HDFC Life, which is your HDFC Pension Management Company and HDFC Standard Life and Re Company. And these two companies are also growing at a very fast rate. HDFC Pension Management Company is the largest privately owned pension management company in India with a market share of around 31%. The pension fund management market in India has just started and there is huge growth potential in the long term. Next factor for future growth is low insurance penetration. Indian life insurance and medical insurance sector is highly underpenetrated. But due to the increasing awareness about medical and life insurance, this sector is going to grow at a very good rate. Third key aspect is digitalization. Technology is going to play a crucial role in the life insurance sector. For example, the life insurance medical insurance sales from online channel is going to increase at a very good rate. SDFC Life is continuously strengthening its distribution network and focusing a lot on direct and online channel which contributes around 22% in its overall business and it is expected to grow in the future. It has also implemented technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, speech recognition, cognitive bots, etc. Next factor for future growth is increased life expectancy. Advancement in healthcare facilities has increased the life expectancy and that coupled with the emergence of nuclear family would require pension based life insurance products. Overall on future growth prospect, I would rate HDFC life 10 on 10. If you look at the growth ratio, then total premium of the company has increased consistently. In FI 16, it was at the level of 16,313 crore and in FI 20, it has grown to 32,707 crore. And in terms of CAGR growth, it has grown at a CAGR of 19%. And if you look at the total new business premium, which is basically the premium from new business, it has grown from 6,488 crore in FI16 to current level of 17,238 crore in FI20, which is a growth of 28% CAGR. If you look at the asset under management, then it has grown from 74,247 crore in FI16 to a level of 127,226 crore in FI20 and the growth rate has been 14%. And if you look at the number of life insured, it has increased from 1.5 crore in FI16 to 6.1 crore in FI20 which has grown at a CGR of 41%. If you look at the embedded value, which is basically the current value of all the future profit, then it has grown from 10,233 crore in FI16 to 20,650 crore in FI20, which is a CAGR of 19%. And if you look at the profit after tax, it has grown from 818 crore in FI16 to 1,295 crore in FI20, which is a growth of 12% CAGR. On growth ratio, I would rate it 10 on 10. If you look at the profitability ratio, both return on equity and return on capital employed are well above 20%. However, in March 20, both ROA and ROC have fallen to 19 and 19.57%. And you can see that over the years, profitability has reduced and it is mainly due to stiff competition in life insurance space. If you look at the current profitability, ROE and ROC are 19 and 19.57% respectively, which is also pretty good. Next criteria is customer centricity and within that you've got claim settlement ratio which basically means out of 100 people who have claimed the insurance how many claims have been settled by the company. If you look at the claim settlement ratio it has grown from 95% in FI16 to 99.1% in FI20. Next criteria is persistency 
which means how many people have continued their insurance premium. It is measured in 13 month and 61 month. So 13 month persistency means how many people are continuing their premium after 13 months and 61 M persistency means how many people are continuing their premium after 61 month. Normally, many people end up discontinuing their insurance policy after a particular point and that's why it is very important to measure company performance via persistency. If you look at the 13M and 31M persistency, then 13M persistency is increased consistently and currently it is at level of 88% in FI20. And if you look at the 61M persistency, it is 54% in FI20. If you compare the persistency of SDFC Life with other company in insurance space, then SDFC Life has done very well. Overall on customer centricity, I would rate it 10 on 10. Next criteria is liquidity ratio. Within this, you have got solvency ratio and you have got debt to equity ratio. Solvency ratio is basically the criteria set by IRDA to have a solvency of 150%. And SDFC Life has got a solvency ratio of 195% which is much above the required minimum limit. And in terms of debt to equity, company is completely debt free. Hence, on liquidity ratio, I would rate it 10 on 10. If you look at the SDFC Life insurance current price, then it is currently trading at level of 676 rupee. In last 52 weeks, it has made a high of 688 rupee and a low of 339 rupee. So currently, it is trading close to its all-time high. If you look at the share price movement in last one year, it has fallen during the March 20 period and then since then, it has recovered to level of 676 rupee. So the share price has almost doubled in last 8 months. If you look at the price to earning ratio, then you can see that in last one year, the median PE of the company is 88.6. And currently it is trading at a PE of 101.9. During the March crash, it was at the PE of 58.5. At a PE ratio of 102 and PE G ratio of 11.1, SDFC Life is trading at very high valuations. But one thing is for sure, you will not find SDFC Life at cheap valuation. For example, during the market crash in March 20, the PE ratio of SDFC Life fell to 63. So you can't expect SDFC Life to be available at a P ratio of 15 to 20. The reason being that everyone knows that life insurance sector in India has got a great potential and SDFC Life being one of the leader in this sector is going to grow at a very good rate. Well, in that case, what is the right strategy? Should you wait for the share price to fall or should you invest now? The better strategy in my opinion would be to invest a fixed sum periodically in the share or you can also invest on every dip. Overall if we conclude, SDFC Life is a fundamentally super strong company but it is currently available at higher valuation. So what do you think about SDFC Life? Is it worth investing at current level? Do let me know your thoughts in the comment box. Also let me know which company do you want me to analyze in the future. I will see you next week.